hobbies. This is the start of our Thursday evening live chats. This is episode two. So I am using my iPad. I cannot see you jump in and out of the uh, video feed. So, sorry from the chat feed. So if uh, you come in, I uh, uh, can tell that you're coming in when you start messaging me. We're going to be covering details all about basing tonight. So uh, be sure to participate. If you have any questions, just ask me and uh, I'll give you some feedback. Oh, people are starting to jump in. Hello there, how you doing? So tonight we, oh, lack of foresight, great. Awesome. Um, I've made some changes to the lighting. It was a little harsh last week. I do see that I've got a fair bit of light here on my face. Let me just rearrange some of the lighting right in here. A little less direct. That's maybe a little bit better. So tonight we're going to talk all about basing um, and uh, we're going to hit a few details. So first thing though, I want to go over uh, what went on last week. So thank you for everybody that uh, came out to the previous uh, live feed. Uh, I've had uh, a lot of views. It's now available in the... Good, okay. Uh, it's uh, I've had a lot of views and the live feeds are available in the in with my regular videos on the uh, channel. So if you wanna go back and catch up or there's anything you wanna see, let me know. I'm still working out the format for how it's going to be. Uh, last week we were discussing uh, terrain in general. So this week I'm gonna to try to move in with a little bit more of a focused look on methods for basing. Uh, as a review from last week, I was uh, talking a little bit about uh, accumulating the products to prepare for um, the North African uh, mid-war launch. Uh, that's going to come out mid-February. Uh, I'm coming up on my deadlines for getting uh, uh, my materials ready for it for Battlefront. And uh, so I've been working on preparing uh, de the Desert House kits. So I alluded to it a little bit in my feeds. There's going to be quite a lot of uh, it's going to be quite a lot of coverage. So I'm going to be doing two specific videos. They won't be available into the live launch date uh, that uh, Battlefront puts up. But uh, here's the sneak peek. So they sent me they they sent me the desert houses, um, the large desert house, and then the ruined desert house set. So here. So uh, most of my viewers know that I don't, um, usually when I get these things, I repaint them. I prefer to put a, my personal touch on all of the uh, all of the models I work with. So these are originally came as a, like a very stark white, um, but I've uh, hit them with a few ink washes and some dry brushes. They're a pretty good product. Uh, some ink washes, some dry brushes. I don't know if you can see here, the effects. Um, I'm. I just absolutely love weathering pencils, so I've put weathering pencils in to put uh, uh, wear and tear and um, battle damage on the on the buildings. So I'm quite happy with how those have turned out. Those will be, of course, uh, displayed on the uh, neoprene uh, battle mat that uh, I uh, got shipped to me in the last video when we opened up live on the air, uh, and uh, so. Now, on top of that, I've got these scale came out a little small, actually. It should be. Where's the camera? They should have come out larger, but I was uh, I made them for the 3D printer. So then I've got these camels here. So um, I've actually got little details in the upcoming videos of my some of my last visit or my only visit uh to when i went over to uh, north africa so my family and i uh went uh, uh went to morocco before the lockdowns happened and uh, got to have a look around ended up in a desert tour and uh, so i've painted one of those camels after one of the camels that was at the camp and i've built uh, i've used some artistic license but the bathroom building at the camp um Spent a lot of time in it because I had food poisoning. So I've built a 
it's not really a replica of it my rendition of it to go into the uh into the display or into into the one of the uh scatter terrain pieces that'll be featured in the in the battlefront video so i've got uh four people on there now great thanks for joining me if you have any questions uh fire any uh, uh questions into the chat or if you just want to say hi that's fine uh Please note that in the chat down on the right side, there is a square box with a dollar symbol in it. If you press that, you can send a super chat or super message out, which allows you to uh, just make a small donation to the channel. I appreciate uh, any and all bits uh, that you might want to uh, share. Uh, as you can see, I've got... Uh... Hi, Kamara, how's it going? Uh, you can see I, I'm accumulating for some uh, upgrades, so I need to uh, fix up my camera option, and I need to fix up some camera options and some sound options for the channel, so anything that you might contribute will be going to that, and I would greatly appreciate it. But no pressure, you don't have to feel, you know, that that's, uh, that's only secondary. I really appreciate everybody that's following the channel. Um, they said... Um, I'm hitting uh, over 1,100 subscribers now. We're growing in leaps and bounds. And uh, so I really, really appreciate it. Uh, this week, I've got the live stream, and then I've got a video coming out on the weekend. It's an unboxing of Napoleonics for Victrix, so keep an eye out for that. Um, I won't have a full video, a full in-depth video out this week, because um, other than the Victrix one, because uh, I'm preparing for the uh, mid the the North Africa mid war launches and and um, as I was saying I've got I've got quite a bit of terrain work to do between between now and and then on that let alone my my own models and my regular painting I've been promising Mitchell to be getting some American forces ready for uh, his Team Yankee Americans for a while and. Uh, um, we're not really moving forward on that, so I've got to I've got to lay heavily into that afterwards. Anyways, on to bases. So there's two real essential types of bases that we encounter in wargaming, and that would be terrain basing and model basing. All right. Uh, hey, what do you like to use to seal terrain? I really uh, diluted PVA. Uh, I should add some dishwashing liquid. Uh, yes, so good good question. So the best stuff for um, sealing bases, in my opinion, is here. So PVA white glue, all right, white glue we're, uh, in Canada, is um, really the, be the best option. If you do put some dishwasher liquid in it, it will flow a lot better. So you mix it with some water, you mix it with some dishwasher liquid, and it'll flow a lot better down into the uh, into the pore, so it'll it'll bond. Um, if you can, though, I highly recommend that you do use Mod Podge. All right. So in Canada, this is pretty easy to get. It's in Walmart. Um, I think it's pretty easy to get pretty well anywhere, and it is really just PVA glue but it's um, a thicker body and I find it bonds better and it dries a lot faster. I'm gonna talk, uh, we're gonna talk some more about that uh, in a few minutes because there's uh, dishwashing liquid, like dish soap is, is fine for breaking the surface tension for getting it to flow, but there's a better mix and, and um, we'll talk about that. So you've got your two basic types of, of bases. You've got your war games bases and you've got your terrain bases. And obviously, um, in terms of putting basing material on them, the methodology is essentially the same, just larger or smaller surfaces. Oh, no problem. Just larger or, or smaller surfaces. So there's something pretty small, right? Some um, Flames of War Russians. There's something pretty large. And really, what when you're sticking it down, it's it's all just exactly the same process, and um, I'll probably do it live here in a second. But the 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 thing to keep in mind is um, when you're doing a terrain base that you want the terrain base to sort of evoke the um, image of 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 what you're building. So let me just give you an example. So here's a house. Uh, here's a here's a hanger. Got like an industrial hanger. This is going to sit flat on my terrain table. 
Uh, but notice that the base it's on is completely rectangular. All right, I've, I've actually um, scored um, brick pattern into it or, or um, concrete pattern into it so it matches my, uh, my city um, table components. But it's sitting on a rectangle and a rectangle is, well, for a building, right? It doesn't look great when you take a, this is, this is a very simple thing, but th something I've seen people miss. It doesn't look great when you've got an intact structure sitting on an organically shaped base. Okay. So the same, however, goes for um, ruined or naturalized things. So if you take a something that's supposed to be part of the environment and you put it on a rectangular base, I should have brought an example over, but uh, I didn't. I've got a, um, I've got a, um, graveyard that I made that's on a perfectly rectangular base, but it's overgrown. It doesn't really have the soft edge to blend with, to blend with nature around it. And it just doesn't look quite right. So here's a crashed glider I made um, a while back, but notice the main feature of this base is obviously that the glider is in nature. Okay, so it's got the ruts carved up the mud. There's plenty of rocks and other other things around. And if this was on a perfectly square base, it would not look right. So natural environment, you want a um, organically shaped base. Man-made environment, you want a rectangular base. Okay, like that. So pretty simple, but it really does go a long way to help you um, make your terrain look better. It somehow just looks wrong if you don't have the right base shape for the occasion. All right, now talking about bases themselves for terrain, I'm, as I said la last week, I'm, I'm old, right? I, I started um, building models uh, terrain when I was 10 or 12, uh, reading White Dwarf articles back when there really wasn't much of a, a, a model building or terrain building scene. And before this stuff was often regarded as art, uh, which it definitely is. But uh, back then we didn't have a lot of options for basing. So these days you can get you can get mason, pre-cut masonite and you can get uh, pre-cut plastic bases or vinyl bases to put your models on where the edges are all nicely be beveled. They're not terribly common in Canada. Um, or well, really, I've never I've never seen the um, the vinyl ones. I've seen the I've seen the masonite ones, but I just go with the old fashioned cardboard method. The trick to the cardboard method is like when you cut out your base, and this is something I explain a lot in my videos, but it's very important. And then usually in my videos, I've got to go fairly quick, so I don't get into the specifics. But so say I'm say this is um, a a uh, piece of terrain is going to go on top of this. And um, just imagine the whole thing is covered with, with cardboard at the moment, with the cardboard paper at the moment. But say a piece of terrain is going to go on top of this. If I put my Mod Podge, my glue, if I so soak this with um, the rubbing alcohol method, as it dries, it, the whole thing is going to flex, right? And then you're going to get you're going to get it to curl as, as, as the glue dries, everything contracts. And so one... Um, piece of, of um, cardboard on its own isn't a great option for forming a base, even though it's effectively free and it's really easy to work with. However, once you add a second layer of cardboard to it, then you get a lot more strength. The trick is not putting the cardboard, so see how I've peeled the, I've intentionally peeled the paper back on this so that you can see there's the corrugation there and there. See how they're running, um, in line with each other that way. All right, if I glued this down and then applied my terrain, applied my glue to that, it's all gonna flex and it's it's going to uh, it, it's going to warp. You can maybe bend it back gently if you want, but the best thing you can do is and just to to fix that is so see how I'm gonna run that grain up and down. I'm gonna run that grain sideways. So now I've got the grains crossed and they're they're at a right angle to each other. Go in, super glue that onto there, and you're good. All right. That is a lot stronger this way, and it will not warp. If it does, it's just gonna warp a minor bit and you'll be able to uh to stretch it back. 
Another thing that's come up over the years with uh, um, my method, let me just grab another piece of equipment here. Is a lot of people when they build their terrain, they're going to take the, they're going to take their uh, layers, they're going to glue them together, and then um, they're either going to just leave it with the ends of the cardboard exposed, which you don't want to do, uh, for a couple reasons. One, that the moisture will get in there and it will help. Uh, it will help it like it'll make it warp. Um, so you want to avoid that. And then the other thing is that uh, well, it looks ugly to have the exposed cardboard. A lot of people will take uh, filler, okay, we call it spackle um, or plaster, and run it around the edges, and uh, that'll seal it up. Now, that is uh, your best option. It, it just hands down. It's um, something that model builders have been using for a long time. I just go ahead and use it. It's really good. I mean, you can you can shape it. But if you're like me and you're in a rush or if you're knocking out an order, um, where you've got to you know roll up so many pieces of terrain in a in a day, then what you can just do is get yourself a roll of masking tape, tape around the edges. All right, you tape you tape around the edges. You can use it to smooth off the gradient between the levels. So here's an example. There's an example there. Okay, tape off the gradient between the levels and seal it all up. All right. Oh, someone else has just dropped in. Thanks for showing up. Really, really appreciate it. Just discussing basing. All right, so that's your basic approach to to how to design a uh, a base to put terrain on top of. Obviously, with wargaming bases, um, most of the time the bases are going to come from the manufacturer. Uh, this one I actually three D printed. I do make make uh, for my Napoleonics. I like to make my own bases, but. Uh, um, <laughs> You can go. You can go. You know, get the bases from from any manufacturer. GW ba GW models. Most models come with bases. Perry models. Most of them come with bases. So uh, you don't really need to get a lot into that. But uh, the preparation is all the same thing. So let me go through um, how I would prepare a base or how I would prepare um, a uh, a base for texturing. So let's work with this. All right, so this is coming up. So there's, um, I've masked it all off. There's walls under here. There's a well there. Okay, this is for the North African uh, layout. All right, so when you start, you're going to need, and this is what I was alluding to before. I hope you're um, still on. I was asking the question before about um, using dish soap. Your best option is right here. So the glare is in the way. I don't know if I can get out of the glare. Okay, there we go. Rubbing alcohol. All right. Just straight rubbing alcohol. It doesn't matter what the percentage is as long as like 50% is fine. You know, you can get higher percentage. It really doesn't matter. And then pour out rubbing alcohol. That's probably more than I'll ever need for this. And the thing when you're building your base is that um, you might as well prime as you go. So a lot of people will glue their grit down or glue their content down on their base and then they'll prime it. You don't need to do that. You can you can prime as you go. So here's just some, uh, this isn't perfect, but this is the only brown ink I have at the moment. So that's antelope brown ink. Good enough. Okay. Acrylic ink, mind you, use acrylics. Acrylics, when they dry, they have an adhesive property. You wouldn't, you wouldn't um, use enamels to do this. So then I go in, mix it in, grab a pipette. Mm, that's not a great color, is it? But anyways, so that's just straight rubbing alcohol now with acrylic ink mixed into it. So we're gonna hang on to that. And we're gonna go to the Mod Podge. All right, so Mod Podge dries better than um, white glue. It dries faster, in my opinion, um, and it also bonds better. In fact, it bonds so well, I can't get the lid off this at the moment. If I was smart, I would have uh, opened that before the uh, before the video. But anyways, here we go. More Mod Podge. And you can use Mod Podge gloss. You can use Mod Podge matte. Um, Mod Podge... Mod Podge uh, gloss uh, makes very convincing water if you want to uh, 
avoid having to use resin. It's not as good as resin, but um, if you're doing like a, a shallow body of water and you want to do it quick, then by, by all means, just go ahead and use um, use Mod Podge gloss. I always keep a lot of it on hand if I'm going to be doing a uh, if I'm going to do a feature like that, water feature. Okay, so now I've poured out my Mod Podge. I'm going to hit it with some water. Still want it fairly thick right now. And then I'm going to hit it with some brown paint. So this lets me texture the uh, this lets me texture the adhesive ahead of time. Again, it's got to be acrylic. Okay, you can't use enamels for this. You have to it has to be water-based acrylic. And uh, um, you can mix it as dark as you want. If I'm if I'm um, preparing it. If I'm preparing most types of terrain, I'll, I'll usually just lay down black to function as a, a primer. But in this case, this is going to become desert terrain, so I'm using a, a sort of a mid-tone brown. All right. And if I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what I'm going to get. So 30-some years as a model painter. I mean, I've been painting, been preparing models since since I was, you know, in, in 10 or 12 years old, or terrain since I was 10 or 12 years old. I've built terrain for... Um, um, international features and 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 uh, uh, gaming companies and stuff, and I've never actually ever built a desert terrain before ever. So I don't know how I I managed to miss that. But anyways, so now grabbing the Mod Podge while it's fairly thick, I just start spreading it on. All right, spread it on. Now I've got this mask so, because uh, I've pre-painted all the walls. Um, sometimes. Sometimes I won't pre-paint uh, the terrain. I'll just paint it all in place. Uh, there's a fairly complex um, series of colors on these walls, rock patterns, and they would be um, they're probably used for close-up photography. So I, 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 I painted them separately. Now, here is, I like to make rocks out of styrofoam. That's just a little cut off chunk, extra chunk of styrofoam. You can put your... Uh, Mod Podge and your your base coat right over that. In fact, if you intend to prime with if you intend to prime using um, spray paint, you have to paint over your um, styrofoam effects because the propellant and spray paint will dissolve. I don't know if you guys have ever done it. I certainly have. I've ruined more things than I care to admit. Um, the propellant in your in your um, spray paint will dissolve the foam you can also do it certain um certain spray paints if you're not careful when you're when you're pl uh, basing plastic models will also corrode the models don't do that always get a piece of sprue out if you're uncertain always get a piece of sprue out because i mean obviously the sprue is made of the same stuff as the rest of the model get a piece of the sprue out ahead of time and test it uh test the spray paint on it see if you uh, melt it into a pile of goo I killed, uh, nearly killed an entire box of uh, Tyranid Hormigants back in the day by uh, by using a spray paint without testing it first, and they lost all their definition. Uh, they actually made pretty good terrain because they look like like really gnarly alien, melted alien bodies on the terrain, but you probably would rather use them for gaming, so don't do that. So I'm just so I got a fairly good coat of uh, my tinted Mod Podge on here now. All right, there like that, and now I can texture. So um, just trying should have put a handle on this. Maybe I can do the whole thing. So again, if you have any questions as we're going, let me know. And the previous questions about basing um, coming along here. All right, so now. Texture. Look, you can texture with whatever you like, all right? Lots of people have different ideas. I'll use sandbox sand. Got a box of sandbox sand, or got a um, bag of sandbox sand, you know, many, many years ago. I've been using it since then. I'm going to need to replace it this summer, and it's lasted me at least since I moved into this house, so it's lasted me at least 15 years. Uh, I also like to vary up the uh, vary up the size of the grid a little bit, so I'll throw a little um, kitty litter in sometimes. Obviously, uh, clean kitty litter. Um, either uh, 
it's kind of funny. We talked about it briefly last week, but clumping kitty litter actually works pretty, uh, pretty well. When it gets um, damp, it forms really nifty organic shapes. So it's probably not um, ideal for just regular, um, just like regular um, scenery. But if you want to have like a really uh, alien look to it, then then it's it's a pretty neat idea. So here we go. I'm just got to touch up a couple edges. You can always come back to it. All right, so uh, there's my grit. So my grit is on, all right? So now the question before about, oops, I missed a spot. Question before about dish soap. Um, dish soap is great. Uh, can almost guarantee nothing living in it. Not a fan of having to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't want to dry things out in your in your um, oven before you before you lay it on. Um, it's just, this is really straightforward. And I mean, it's as cheap as dirt. Well, it is dirt. <laughs> it's just it's super cheap, right? So so you don't have to worry about the expense of it. Okay, so there we have. I have my grit, grit on. So um, most war game people, most war gamers now know this trick. You get that on. Get that on. You then go and get some, uh, um, you dump off the excess. You go and get some white glue, you water down the white glue, and then you um, maybe put a little bit of dish soap on it and you go put it in. That's fine. Okay, that's going to work. Oh, thank you. Someone else has joined in. So for those of you who have just come in, we're discussing basing tonight. This is our second uh, live stream for Miniature Landscape Hobbies. Excuse me. We're talking about model basing for uh, dioramas and wargaming. So I'm just doing, uh, showing my method for model basing here as we go. All right, so now I've got the grit on. So normally you'd water down the white glue. Oh, hi Gun Barrel, how goes it? Um, you'd water down the white glue and you'd put it on. But um, I learned this looking at the uh, model train community. They have a better way to do it. So this takes us back to this. Okay, so that's our rubbing alcohol with our brown ink in it. All right. I now go back to my original horrible concoction of um, Mod Podge, and I'm gonna really heavily, heavily water it down. Okay, so I'm gonna get it down there so it's at least 80% water, all right? At least 80% water so it flows. We want it, we want it to flow fairly easily from the pipette, okay? Pipette's an easy way to apply it. And then we're our straight rubbing alcohol with ink in it. All right, so I need more hands than I have to show you guys this because my camera angle doesn't get down there. But here we go. All right, grab uh, grab a, um, a load of my rubbing alcohol, and now while the paint is wet below the grit. I just start layering the rubbing alcohol on and it's not held flat so it's hard to see but what's going to happen is the rubbing alcohol will spread very quickly under the uh will spread very quickly under the grit all right and that will help the uh as it dries that will draw the uh, glue up into the grit from below all right so that it helps form a better bond and then on top of that, with my watered down stuff, I can now just layer that on top, okay? Um, and it will be diffused through there using the, uh, it'll be diffused through there using the rubbing alcohol. And then that is how you get your, um, that's how you get like that really, really good bond that, you know, like you can chuck dice at this and it will never it will never break. Um, it's really really hard to peel a, uh, any of it off. So I know I bought some used models. Um, Jesus, uh, bought some used Flames of War models um, just just when the lockdown started. I wanted to do some British. I bought them from a really nice dude. And uh, the problem was that when when the glue had been when the he had already flocked or textured the bases. So this is the soft and delicate. <laughs> um, so when, when he had textured the bases, I guess he hadn't really used much more than just throwing sand on top of white glue. And when I was when I was painting them, it all just come off in flakes. 
and then I had to rebond them. Yeah, until it bonds, it's damp with glue and alcohol. Yeah. So I'm almost done this. It's a quick process. It's a good process. And then, like I uh, like I said, um, I think Mod Podge just dries faster. So this will get soaked pretty heavily, but by uh, by tomorrow morning, it will be as dry as can be and ready to go. Uh, another thing that I should have uh, got the setup to show you, but so if this was a war game model and we were doing exactly, if this is a, a, a model, like a based model, um, actually, you know what? I just find one. Okay. Right. Here we go. Uh, there is a uh, dragoon, right? So um, what I would do in this case is going back to my Mod Podge. Uh, that Mod Podge needs to be uh, less flowy. Oh, thanks for coming in. Someone else has jumped on. If you have any questions, please hit me up as we go. Be happy to answer any model painting questions or um, terrain building questions. If you look down in the bottom right in the chat column, there is a little box with a uh, dollar symbol in it. That's for super chats or super stickers. If you would like, you can use that to put a small donation into the channel. No pressure, only if you only if you would feel like it. How do you like uh, to model rock faces? I'm trying not to go down buying molds. Uh, yeah, look, you don't need that stuff, those molds. Um, I have a video I posted last week or the week before where I built Rocky Hills. So go check that out. Um, uh, I didn't really want to talk a lot about rocks today. Can you get just one second, okay? I got to go about 20 feet to my left. All right, so nothing beats plaster, honestly, for making rock. So you go get the Woodland Scenics rock molds and you can make that. Um, if you want to do that, uh, yeah, check it out. You'll, you'll, you'll see exactly what, um, what you're asking for. But the, uh, basically I built this. So nothing beats plaster, all right? It creates the most realistic rock texture. It's also pretty hard to work with, especially for wargaming, it will chip. So if you're pouring, um, if you're pouring plaster to make um, war games terrain, don't um, the, don't don't just pour it straight. Tint it first with the base color, so that if it does chip, like you hit it with some dice or something, it chips. That you just don't see gaudy white coming through. That you see you see some of the base color coming through, but. Um, I, I, I would generally say that you've got two better options for building rocks for like quick scatter terrain or for um, things that don't need a, a lot of, um, really a lot of detail. Well, detail, I mean, you get really good detail, but um, that maybe just not quite the rocky texture. And uh, one thing is tree bark is like, if you go get some, some tree bark with um, really deep grain to it, um, uh, paint it black, dry brush it gray. It's wicked. It looks just very, very realistic. And I mean, it's free. Uh, the other thing is, of course, insulation foam. So insulation foam is the is the model painter's best friend, right? That guy. Okay. So that's half inch. I usually buy a half inch. This is 11 bucks in Canada. Get eight foot slabs of it. Um, a slab or two will last me a year. Um, and then you cut it up into chunks with a sharp craft knife and just glue it on, all right? Um, glue it on, coat it with Mod Podge, just like I showed you with, with the uh, base color. So in this case, of course, I would have used a black because I'm highlighting up to gray. Coat it with Mod Podge and then um, that will give it some nice texture. A trick you can do as well is if um, you really wanna get a lot of deeper, um, uh, stone grain texture and this is 
This is coming up in my in a future video, but here I've worked a little bit of rock texture into it. And what you do is you grab a piece of tin foil, roll it up into a ball, and then roll it back and forth on the uh, on the foam. And then what that will do is um, transfer some texture onto the foam. Um, sorry, I just go out of frame for a second. Yeah, I guess I don't have an example here at the moment, but it, it's also in those videos. And it's, it's a really cool transformation. Just just, just take your, uh, like a clump of styrofoam and press it in, and it transfers a, a really nice uh, rock texture. But do check the video out on how to sculpt from the from the pink styrofoam. It's really been, uh, it's really been most anything I've ever needed. Um, just make sure that if you're going to, again, the spray paint will melt that stuff. So, if you're going to um, paint it and you have to prime it with spray paint, like say you're doing a, a big area of it or something, you just have to have spray paint. Make sure that you get a couple coats of that Mod Podge uh, um, on over top first. That'll seal it and protect it from the spray paint. And then you can spray paint it all you want. Um, just, just, just make sure you do that first so you don't destroy your own work. Okay, so I need some black. All right, so back to model basing, all right? So here's just Mod Podge. Again, if you don't have Mod Podge, use white glue interchangeably. doesn't make a difference. Um, well, it does make a difference, but it's not that significant. However, if you're serious about it, put the white glue away and go buy um, a, big, a big bottle of Mod Podge uh, anywhere at the art supply store because um, it is better in the long run. Just dries better. Okay, so this is all right. Okay, so Mod Podge, a little bit of a little bit of black paint. The reason why I'm using black in this case is because it's going to match all the other models in the series. Okay, so I've got these uh, French Napoleonic Dragoons. I've got another twelve of them over there, just off the camera. So I'm going to be basing all these guys later. All right, grab the model. Come in, spread the paint over the base, or sorry, spread the, uh, well, this paint, spread the uh, Mod Podge over the base. Try to get it up and around the hooves. I'm going to show you a trick in a minute to sort of keep your, uh, keep that all safe. Okay, spread it in around the hooves. And you could mask the model off if you wanted first. Uh, I usually find it doesn't matter because um, you're going to dry brush the, you're going to dry brush the grit most likely anyways. And when you dry brush the grit, it's going to spread up onto the model and it's just going to look like dust, right? So if you keep your dry brush nice and light. So there we go. All right. So now, now I've got my black Mod Podge spread on the, uh, on the base of the model. Take my finger, run it around the rim of the base so that the paint, so that the glue and paint is off the rim so it doesn't pick up the uh so it doesn't pick up the grit okay go back to my grit and the model like this just submerge it right in the grit okay. wave it back and forth until it's covered and up now you now you've got your grit on okay so that's all layered on there over that black uh over that black mod podge or uh, yeah, black tinted mod podge all right so now at this point you still got sand sitting on top, so you want you want to use the rubbing alcohol to get the um, to get the 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 glue to diffuse through the grit. So back to my back to my rubbing alcohol and ink mixture. This is brown. Usually, uh, in your video with the B17 scatter train, do you make a template like you did with the glider? Yes, I did. Um, I did make a template with the B17. So. Uh, that doesn't exist anymore. That was a uh, that was a complete experiment, actually. I just dared myself to build a crash plane one day. But it's done exactly the same way as with the glider. Um, take uh, plies of uh, black foam core, well, any foam core, but black is your best bet because you don't have to you don't have to prime it, right? And then uh, glue them together, and then um, uh, peel the paper off, wet the paper, peel the paper off. And then with a file or um, 
with a file or sandpaper, then sand it down to give you the, the, the plain shape, right? The, the fuselage shape. The wings are exactly the same on the glider. The glider, it's just exposed foam here, okay? Uh, but what I will often do when I'm building something with a curved surface like this is put that dragoon down, uh, is I'll wet um, some Bristol board. So we call it Bristol board in Canada. I don't know what you call it elsewhere, but it's that 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 um, crafty board that you buy at the uh, dollar store. And uh, when you wet it, it will, you can just like shape it down over the wing, glue it down over top, and then that'll give you sort of a firm surface. And you can score into that stuff if you want to imply panel lines too. So the, that's, that's, how the, uh, that's how the B-17 got built. Probably my favorite model. Um, there's, uh, we'll do a deep, deeper dive on that build actually in the future because um, I use car body mesh in it too to form like the the the, the shapes of the canopy and stuff and and it's um it's a really neat, it's an it's an old effect it's something that 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 people have been doing for years but it, I thought it worked out pretty well. You're welcome. So here we go. So I come up. Now I'm just gonna take my uh, take my rubbing alcohol uh, mix and just lay it down over top, and that will penetrate down into the uh, into the grit. And obviously you don't need much, right? A little goes a long way there. Thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. Um, see some people have jumped in and out. So uh, if you have any questions, do hit me up in the chat. I'd be happy to answer any questions. We're talking about. Um, basing but model building and painting in general is perfectly fine and uh in the bottom right in the chat corner there in the corner of the chat box there is a little square with a dollar symbol in it if you would like you can press that and you can do what's called either a super chat or a super sticker which will pass on a small donation to the channel i would appreciate it uh it does help because um Obviously, there's the, you know, I need to upgrade the cameras and want to upgrade the sound. So anything that you do donate will go into production for the channel. If, though, if that's not your thing, don't worry about it. I just really love having you here, okay? Uh, so anyways, I've put the, now, so now I've put the rubbing alcohol down. All right. I'm going to go back to my original black paint, paint and Mod Podge. Water it down just a little more until it flows. Bring it up with a pipette and get pipettes, guys. I mean, they're super cheap. I buy huge packages of them on Amazon. Uh, they're better than a brush for this. And they, you know, they do the same thing. And now I just go in, so this should be darker. Anyways, I may have to repaint this black later. But then I just go on and layer it down. Now, it'll be hard to see on the camera. Where's where's the camera over here? It'll be hard to see on the camera, but what happens is because there's um, a low surface tension, oh, it's dri dripping down my hand, but because there, um, because the surface tension is broken by the, by the rubbing alcohol, then when you apply the paint, it doesn't ride up onto the model. You know how sometimes how um, something is really viscous will ride up onto the model and might damage it? If you lay down the rubbing alcohol first and then the paint on top of that, the rubbing alcohol will wick it away into the grit away from the uh, from the model. So it's a very forgiving way to put your to put your basic prime down on your, uh, your basic prime down on your grit. Um, and then that just sits aside to dry. Now if I, I prime that with Mod Podge and rubbing alcohol, um, I don't know if anybody really knows people say that rubbing alcohol is good for it because it helps the water evaporate faster. Don't really know I suppose. Uh, that will be dry by what time is it? So it's five now. I'll probably be able to put the um, texture, I'll probably be able to put the dry brush on that tonight yet before bed. So that probably by like eight or nine, it'll be dry. If it was uh, regular um, water and white glue, you would have to wait till tomorrow morning. Uh, so that gives you that. Gives you that. Um, I've got to hit this one while we're at it. So I might as well just keep you guys on here and keep going. I'm going to uh, spread my next uh, my next layer of grit down on this base, and then these ones will be ready for painting. Might be ready for for later tonight. Otherwise, they'll be ready for tomorrow. Uh, does the percentage concentration of rubbing alcohol matter much? Not at all. Never noticed any difference whatsoever. Um, it, just buy whatever's cheapest. Um, 
I've uh, I did a little bit of experimentation originally with with what the higher percentage did, and I noticed no difference. So it might have facilitated um, evaporation faster. Uh, it might have dried faster. I didn't think to measure that at the time, but I doubt it's important. Um, if you're one thing that one thing that does happen is that if you're a 3D printer. Um, uh, if you're a 3D printer, then you're going to have rubbing alcohol on hand for cleaning your, your prints anyways. And then um, if you do, then you will want higher percentage because, because um, the lower percentage stuff doesn't do a great job of, of dissolving print resin. Uh, but uh, if you run a 3D printer, you probably already know that and you probably go through it by the gallon. Um, so, uh, but no, for, for like this sort of stuff, um, percentage doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Not, not in my opinion. Inter if, if you ever, you know, if you come up with an opinion on it though, let me know because, uh, because it's probably worth, um, probably do worth doing a little bit of, of thinking about, like if it facilitates a faster drying time, then, um, then that might be really good to know, especially during uh, production season. So, um, coming up in, well, more or less my area in March, usually I'm away uh, usually I'm away on March break with my family, but because of the lockdowns, I'm not going anywhere this year. So the first time in a million years, I'm able to get to, um, really the only war game show that's, that's, that's in our area provided that, uh, provided that the, the lockdown to shut it down. Right. And that's, um, hot lead, which is in Stratford, which is a couple hours from here. Uh, the guys from Canadian War Game Podcast are putting it on. I'm actually looking forward to it this year. I'm on their podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm being interviewed for the podcast next Wednesday night, I think. And I want to talk to a little bit more about, about the convention. I used to go to the conventions all the time when I was with Games Workshop, and I, and I loved it. And it's the, honestly, it's like the only thing. It's like the only thing I miss about GW is going to the conventions. Uh, yeah, hot lead. Yeah. Try to try to get there, Jacob. Um, I've never been. I've never been. Don Perrin um, was telling me about it. I don't know if you know Don, um, but he was telling me about it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm stupid. I need to go. So the thing about that is that if I go to Miniature Landscape Hobbies, I'll be running some games. Uh, I'll be running some games. I'll probably also uh, bring my Etsy store with me. So I'm going to need to build a lot of terrain between now and then. Uh, <laughs> so anything to give to give the uh, to give a, a uptick in terms of speed, like whether or not that higher percentage of alcohol or anything makes a big difference, would be <laughs> would be good to know before that because I I have a vision that um, like when the North Africa details are done. I'll be done my portion of the North, uh, preparing for the North African release, um, probably Monday or Tuesday when these, when these pieces of terrain are done. And then I'm on to the next thing. I was thinking what I'd probably do is do a series of videos. I've never been myself. Rob Sher Sherwing has been. Yeah. Well, maybe get a, see if you can this year. I don't know if you'll be able to. Um, I, I'm 90%, I mean, 90% sure I'm going this year. I'm really looking forward to it because, uh, I've, as I said, I've been to a gaming convention since uh, GW Canada was a thing, and that was that was a long time ago. Um, yeah, so I'm go going there, and I guess I'll fire up my Etsy store. I've not had a lot of activity on the store last few uh, last few weeks. I, I'm always at one of those points where I'm like. Am I going to keep it? Am I not going to keep it? And then just as I'm thinking, maybe I'll just back down from Etsy and only take terrain commissions uh, when I when I want. Um, but then I sell a whole bunch. So so I think I'm going to have to produce a whole bunch of, um, you know, hills, woods, all the regular sellers uh, for at a fairly high pace uh, coming into hot lead this year. Now give me a... Give me a reason to get off my butt and, and, and build some more terrain. So I've been uh, trying to uh, stay motivated getting Napoleonics ready. This Mitch, my youngest son, who, who also is a war gamer, uh, has been wanting to play Napoleonics. And Jacob, we were talking about Napoleonics on your live cast early, earlier today, but you're playing the 15 millimeter version. Um, 
I was stupid, and although I I like twenty eight mil, I I I I'm like I really like painting twenty eight mil, and honestly, I was I was missing painting twenty eight mil when I was only playing uh, flames, like this side of flames and Team Yankee, this side of uh, this side of my of GW days. Um, I was missing that larger scale, but uh, uh, a week or two after Mitch and I committed to playing. Uh, um, 28 mil Nape Napoleonics. Then they announced that they were going to do the 15 millimeter Napoleonics. And I was hitting myself in the head because, um, like 15 mil, I guess it's 13 and a bit, uh, 13 and a bit would match all my existing terrain, right? Like my, you know, there's 14 feet of, um, 14 feet of adjustable table spread over there, but 30 feet to my left. And it's all rendered in one one hundred and fit roughly fifteen mil. So <laughs> if 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 I had that one up and running, then uh, you know if I had waited a couple weeks and started fifteen mil Napoleonics, then I <laughs> then I would have a nearly infinite amount of terrain options. Whereas now I'm I'm I find myself going back in time and building a, a twenty eight mil terrain. Uh, of course, not that I really mind that much because uh, you know I just love building terrain. All right, so those bases are now done. Uh, I prefer 28 millimeter looks when painted well, but more uh, play more I want smaller scales. In fact, it matches my existing. Yeah, like it, you, you're like me, right? You, you do, you do mainly. Well, uh, your battle reports are are mainly Flames of War, uh, the 15 mil, and and yeah, the smaller scales are more forgiving. Um, Thing about that is that when when you're when you're a dedicated model you know model guy then then you should be looking well me anyways I'm always looking for the next challenge so I'm I'm always looking for the next challenge so I really enjoyed getting my uh, getting my twenty eight mil uh, skills back this is I was uh, I was painting competitively for a uh, I was painting competitively for a number of years at the at the end before GW Canada um, uh, left. And uh, I was, though I'd never actually got a statue, I had, uh, and I have no idea where they are, but I had a whole bunch of Golden Demon finalist pins, and I was sort of homing in on 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 my skill set for that. And then, of course, at the uh, when GW Canada pulled out, then um, I think that the day after GW, so the day after the final Canadian Games Day was the last day I painted a twenty eight mil model until about two months ago. So uh, that was just that was just the end of. It. In fact, that I did probably didn't paint another model for ten or twelve years after that. Would be cool to see some of your G, uh, painted GW models. Well, I only have one left, so I, I had I have one Warhammer Fantasy um, Captain left. Uh, I sold everything else. So so um, I don't know if you bought any used GW stuff. You might have some of my stuff. I sold. I sold a lot of it. Um, that was an interesting time as I was working uh, at, for GW. Had a program called the Grey Knights or the Outriders, and uh, basically we were we were volunteers, but they would compensate us with. Uh, they would compensate us with models and, and, and new releases for going out, teaching the hobby, teaching painting, running tournaments, things like that. It was really progressive. It was a lot of fun. There was some, about 60 of us. So I'm not sure if anybody on here is watching was involved, but um, Jason Dyer, James Craig, some of my, some of my, um, still my buddy. So we're still fairly tight knit group all did that. And it was honestly, it was some of the most fun I've ever had in my, in my life. But, uh, um, it was a pretty big shock to the system to be going like full bore 40k Warhammer Fantasy building models and, and stuff for spreads that were traveling and painting models for displays and 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 teaching you know two three three times a, a month. Uh, I was running a club uh, with my friend Jim Smith who I don't think is involved in the model community anymore but we had uh, um, we actually had an entire apartment space about 1200 square feet uh, given over to uh, um, model studio and gaming space at the time we had a 64 foot uh, it was modular but we had up to 64 feet of of, of uh, table space we could set up right down the middle of the apartment for events uh and so it was it was major and 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 it, it was pretty serious but uh, uh then gw canada pulled out and uh i pulled the plug on i had some other stuff going on i was, had some business stuff going on i, I um some of my entrepreneurial stuff I was doing, I needed to uh, to switch up. So that that's that. But yeah, you know, whatever. That's all. That's a long time ago. 
So some more people have come in. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're just talking about basing tonight. Uh, we're fairly far into it. We'll probably be going for another 10 minutes or so, guys. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, so if you have any questions, by please, by all means, hit me up with questions in the chat. If you look down in the chat, there is a button on the bottom right with a dollar symbol called Super Chat. If you press that, you can make a small donation to the channel. If you wish, please go ahead. Um, it'll be going to upgrades for uh, studio uh, setup, sound and, and lighting, etc. But uh, don't feel any pressure by all means. Uh, no pressure at all. Just we're just glad to have you here. So uh, we've hit uh, how to, to put uh, the grit down, how to, um, to build the primer into the grit. So the next logical thing to look at would be how to um, paint the grit, uh, but that is about as simple as could be. So you're gonna go in with uh, lighter colors and you're just gonna dry brush it in. So uh, how you choose to do that is really up to you. I have a specific recipe of colors that I dry brush because it matches my main, my main board. So I'll, um, I use, um, uh, cheapo craft brand like crafters acrylic and i just you know save your save your your good vallejos and your your army painters and stuff for the models themselves and then i'll just lay them down in a couple, couple quick dry brushes over top when the grit's dry and uh, um dry brush up i don't i find that if you do a true white as the final color then it's going to look like snow but there um if you can go with an off-white or an ivory color as your final highlight it looks pretty good then down over top of that Mod Podge or white glue again, paint it on, and hit it with some static grass. Now, uh, when it comes to static grass, I'm kind of picky. Uh, I do have a static grass applicator. I don't know where it is. I do have a static grass applicator. There is um, no real worry. Uh, there's no real reason to have to use a static grass applicator. Um, when, when you're just doing a small base, when you're just doing a small base like this, all right, I'll just sprinkle it by hand. But if I'm doing something larger, or if I'm doing something like this, so there's a movement tray, all right, miniature landscape, brand, uh, hobbies branded movement tray, get them, oh no, that's not a good one. Anyways, I've got some movement trays around here with my logo on it. Uh, I 3D print them, join the, join my Patreon, you get the, uh, you get to download them for free, you can print them yourselves, what a, what a membership perk, eh? <laughs> or you can get them in my Etsy store if you want. Um, but, you know, on something like this, so, you know, Napoleonic, to get your movement trays, the whole thing is almost a piece of terrain that moves, right, with the troops, so I'll get, I'll use a static grass applicator on that, so just spread the Mod Podge down, take the shaker and the static grass applicator, use the, you know, run it near the surface so that the static causes the grass to stand upright and lay it down on the models. Um, one thing that I don't think a lot of people think about is, and I want to do a whole, um, a whole episode in the future on um, theory about uh, um, sort of how, uh, sort, sort of theory of how you design a model, but, or how, or not how you design a model, but how you paint and prepare a model so that, that, the composition is right but we tend to have a lot of like here for instance these red coats uh james manto is messaging me right now about about hot lead cool so uh, james i don't know if you're on the uh that was in my messages but i'm not sure if you're on the feed right now um or on the uh live stream but you see here like so i got a lot of red all right, so if you look on the color wheel, the opposite of red is green. All right, so uh, as a complementary color, we want to hit this with a bunch of green to add to balance out the red. Red will always draw your eye. The human eye is attracted to red, so you're going to put green on, and it just looks better. If I left this base um, with warmer colors, then it's going to create the impression that it's going to come out like this, right? It's going to is going to create the impression that this is in a warm environment, all right? And it just doesn't quite look right if it's supposed to be a temperate environment. So you got to work some green into it. 
and once you've got your once you've got your grit down on your base then here's your here you know like if if you've got reds i should say you've got to work some green into it but green will always look will, will, will always be useful i mean it doesn't matter if you know other um other colors because it will it will help the model transition into the board itself the other thing is that terrain tends to look very uniform, um, you know, in, unless you're in uh, putting a lot of different colors in. So finishing your bases with um, grass clumps, uh, static grass, really allows you to make it come alive, all right? So um, that's really my, my favorite part about terrain is when you start putting the, uh, when you start putting the, uh, landscaping down uh, but if you do make sure you don't use a monoculture so th there's you probably can't th th that's um, light spring grass okay uh, that's probably woodland scenic brand uh, that's a really good product but you don't use it don't use it on its own okay you need to get a combination otherwise it doesn't look realistic all right so there's some gold so when you get some when you get some static grass, if you go get like some GW branded stuff or some of this cool uh, um, GF9, I think is, well, I really love the guys at GF9. Uh, uh, they make a really good quality static grass, but get get a couple colors, okay, before you spread that down over top. And use the, uh, that then, then never just use one color of static grass. It just doesn't look right. To go on with that, Okay, you've got the all important grass clumps. So when one thing I'll do is I'll go out and buy um, large numbers of grass clumps. I don't care what brand it is generally. I mean, there's a couple I like more than others, but um, I'll go out and get uh, as big a variety of grass clumps of different colors as I can. All right, keep lots on hand. And the other thing I do is I'll make my own um, grass tufts with, um, there's a product that you can use. There's a couple different ways you can do this. So you can go get some just some rough rough twine and make it yourself, or you can get this um, this fine stuff comes in packages from Woodland Scenics and a couple other brands. Okay, you can. There's a few different ways you can do it. I do the do it the the dumb way. I'll run out some hot glue and I'll just massage it into the fibers and I'll take um, some scissors and cut it down. That was the second video I ever released on my channel was how to build that. So if you're curious about that method, go check it out. Because if you use the twine version, then it's, you know, like you get a spool of 100 feet of twine for 50 cents, I don't know, not much. And um, you'll be able to make uh, grass clumps forever. So uh, go check that video. It is one of, it's funny, it's production quality, you know, like I was still learning. It doesn't, it's not my, I'm not proud of that video, but but it is still one of my most popular videos because it is one of the most useful things you can do, you can use. So when you've built that stuff, always build a variety and keep it on hand. So it all goes into here. And in my case, it all goes into here and then it goes into this cart. I don't know if it's in the frame and rolls around and I'll always be so that's just army painter I'm always looking for new options this is a good product this is green stuff world I've never seen it before two I got it um where did I get it lords of war I think when I was when I was in Oakville last um two two sheets of yellow flowers in here so usually you'll only get one sheet so that's a lot Autumn tough. So always keep a good variety of it. It's fun to collect anyways. And uh, don't be shy on it. The more the more you put to the bases, generally the better. Character bases. This French officer here will generally get a lot. All right, we'll generally get a lot. All right, and then um, regular bases for line troops. Obviously they don't need... Uh, Hello, how's it going? You're just checking in. Not, we're pretty close to the end, but um, regular bases like this, so, so just just line troops are going to get lost in amongst the... Uh, and I know if any um, Naps guys are out there, you're going to give me hell because this guy is a grenadier and he's got blue a blue poof and, and, and blue... Um, 
epaulets, and I know it's wrong. <laughs> I've got to fix them. But um, she just gets a little treatment of static grass. So um, you don't need to put the the grass tufts on on the on the the commodity models unless you unless you really like. Um, they do look good to put on the they do look good to put on the occasional one. Thanks for joining in there. I see a few new uh, people come in. Really, really appreciate you joining me. We're just uh, discussing uh, uh, basing uh, terrain and models tonight. However, we're just we're getting pretty close to the end. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, hit me up, uh, and I'll I'll hang in and a a answer a few more questions, and then we'll wrap up in probably about five or ten minutes. Uh, I will be uh, trying to keep regular live streams out on Thursday night. Uh, I'm a nap guy, just busy painting saddles for Austrian Hussars. Awesome. So I'm brand new to Napoleonics, so uh, I've only been at it for a couple months, uh, and I'm loving it, just absolutely loving it. Um, I'm a, normally a 1-100 scale modeler, uh, painting World War II and Cold War era stuff. And frankly, uh, I, well, nothing. there's nothing like painting tanks. I just love painting tanks. But um, Napoleonics gives you a chance to flex your muscles and get your other colors out, which is, <laughs> which is awesome. So I just finished these, uh, I just finished these Dragoons. Um, some of them turned out better than others. But uh, um, like he's red, he's green, he's gold. He's got, you know, they got white buttons. And these are colors. These are colors you don't get to. These are colors you don't get to paint painting other other hobbies. So, um, so I quite like that part. They're so colorful. Heck, yeah. Hopefully, you'll be around this time most Thursday. Yeah, I, I. That's the plan. That's the plan, Jacob. You know, you get these colors on the 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 um, trumpeters and and the musicians and. You know, horses are all different colors. So it's just, I quite like Napoleonics that reason, because you get to flex your muscles and, and, and try try other colors. Still learning the game systems. Um, looking great. Yeah, I want to um, do some tanks at some stage in my life. Well, check out my videos, because because I eat, breathe, and sleep tanks. Um, if you do do tanks, if you do do tanks, do yourself a favor. Actually, it probably has some application for Napoleonics, too. Um, I'm going, I'm preparing a video for the channel on, uh, weathering pencils. Most of you guys have heard me talk about the magic that is A&K's weathering pencils. Uh, the problem is that I, I love these things so much that I just, I, I, I have to do a video that does them, that does them justice. This is the best model building tool since the invention of acrylic paint. Um, the, 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 they're just the greatest and and they're they're awesome on tanks uh you don't need pigments you don't need um you know they're be they're better than than weathering with uh with a dry brush of, of acrylics they're better than they're better than model pigments uh they're just the greatest thing Anyways, i'm gonna i'll have a video on that coming up hopefully that's my next major video that i think i'll probably bring out before um, I don't know if I'm going to get it out before the, the, before this terrain, uh, drops for, for the, um, for the launch of North Africa, Flames of War North, North Africa, but, uh, it'll be, uh, slightly on the heels of that. So I'll probably start production on that video tomorrow's Friday, probably Monday. Okay. So guys, um, well, we're up to nine viewers. Thanks for, thanks for coming in. We're, we're just about to, just about to close it out for tonight. I got to go make dinner for the family. Uh, so that's a quick once over looking at my techniques for basing. Next week we'll come back and uh, we'll do a new video on Thursday. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. Is there anything you guys want me to home in on uh, in terms of skills? Um, I was uh, initially intending to actually build some terrain on camera, but um, my camera arrangement's not not really appropriate for that yet. So so it will probably be more of just a discussion video, maybe with a little bit of a little bit of um, demonstration. So if you guys have any ideas, uh, either mention it now or hit me through my uh, email or uh, YouTube and uh, let me know what you'd like to see uh, what you'd like to see covered 
I hope that some of these uh, ideas that, that we're discussing, some of these things are, are useful for you in your own terrain uh, or, or model painting for that matter. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps it up for this week. Thanks for hanging in, guys. Uh, really, really, uh, perhaps some tips and tricks on how to make larger pieces like an Italian mountain. Haven't been able to work up the courage to try myself yet. Well, yes. Uh, yeah, let's discuss that. That would be, that would be fine. I know, I know you've been talking a little bit about, about, uh, Jacob, about, about tackling some larger terrain. So that's fine. I mean, it would mainly probably be, um, Foam sculpting. Ah, there we go. Foam sculpting. We can do that because there was other questions about that. So let's hit that next week. Um, it's not particularly hard, but it is super useful. Super, super useful. There are some unique tools to it. You don't need hot wire cutters, um, but they're useful for it. Uh, so that's our, there we go. That's our topic for next week. So we'll discuss that next week. I'll be back at, uh, should be back at 4.30. I've got to make some changes to, my son's making some changes regarding university. That might be a little disruptive, but, uh, got two tips and an explanation. Awesome. Okay. As long as you're happy, uh, you've never done foam sculpting. Well, we'll change that, Jacob. As long as you guys are happy. I mean, that's what miniature landscape hobbies is about. I'm here to, uh, here to help with your skills and uh, I just, I do it. I just love the community, but I will hit you with a couple plugs. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do already, or please do. Uh, channel's growing in leaps and bounds. It monetized last week. Uh, it's gonna be a long time before it's, uh, before uh, um, really there's anything in terms of uh, ad revenue, but the uh, the the interest you guys have shown in it has been just ex extremely flattering to think that I, that I got to the 1,000 subscriber mark and the 4,000 hour mark uh, already. Uh, it was 13 months, and uh, and I really really appreciate that. That's on top of juggling um, my day uh, my day jobs and 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 all the other uh, all the other things in life. Uh, so I also have a Patreon. Check it out if, if you would like. I do appreciate all uh, my patrons. I think I've got one or two in there at the moment. Um, it entitles you to access, depending on the level you come in at, you'll always get access to my 3D print files, uh, general discussion. You can always hit me up for discussion for your own uh, for your own projects. Um, you can get painting lessons, model building lessons. Uh, heck, you go to the top level, I'll build you something. Jacob, you want that, you want that mountain. Well, <laughs> okay, so so there is that option uh, for helping out the channel. And I do appreciate everything that comes through. But most importantly, I just ask that you follow along. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. See you back here next Thursday. Keep the conversation going through my Facebook. You can always get a hold of me. Keep building your models out there. Keep painting and pushing the art form forward. We have to get people, you know, um, miniature uh, painting and wargaming has uh, grown up in the time I took off from my Games Workshop days. And when I got back into it, I was really, really happy. Uh, and uh, I was really, really happy to see that uh, that so many people are enjoying the hobby. And that's that's the, the most important thing. So have a good week. And remember, as always, to keep building life in a miniature. See you guys.